from Cornwall to Birmingham and Johnston and Bexhill. Here's Ribbon, Spire on the Radio. Hello to Rosalie James Music. How are you today? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for letting me uh, chat to you today. So, can you tell me how long have you been a single songwriter for? Well, I started playing the piano when I was four. Um, so, quite, I'm not going to say how old I am, but quite a long time. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I wrote my first song, I think, when I was about 10 or 11. Um, and then I learned the guitar at 14. And that's probably when I started learning to write songs a lot more frequently. So I guess, yeah, I've been been doing it for at least two decades, if not more. <laughs> so can you tell me, uh, how's being uh, autistic, um, autism in your musical, how does, oh, yeah. it, does, does it... Um, is what I'm looking for. Does it um, stop you from doing anything? Yeah, and that's a really good question. Um, it does stop me from doing things because I get very tired very easily and not just physically tired, but socially. After I've done something like this, for example, um, I'll be really worn out for the rest of the day and I won't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> so when my partner comes home, um, he won't get much out of me um, because I'll just be be worn out from from the like social interaction. So that bit's hard. I think it's also autism affects me in the fact that I get very focused on doing the music and I don't think about anything else for days and days and I get a bit obsessive about it. And then I need a rest and then I think I can't do it at all and then I don't do it at all for a few days and then I come back and do it too much I can't get a balance very easily in, in my life so um yeah that's probably the biggest way it affects me when I'm on stage I'm fine um it doesn't affect that so much because I think I just feel most comfortable when I'm singing um and then yeah so then I feel more relaxed but just chatting is harder. This is this is more nerve wracking for me than um, being on the stage singing to thousands of people. <laughs> so, what about meeting people like face to face after you after a gig that you've done? Actually, that's funnily enough, that's not too bad because usually there's something specific that they want to talk about. So they they usually come and they say, "Oh, I really enjoyed that. I'm a musician as well." Or they say. Um, I don't know, I really like this band or that band, but there's something sp like really particular to talk about. What I don't like is when there's nothing particular to talk about and I have to come up with the small talk because <laughs> I don't like small talk and I find it hard. I have to like really concentrate and think about looking at, looking at them for the right amount of time. And yeah, so all that can be a bit tiring. But yeah, I do like speaking to people after shows. And actually talking about that, talking about shows with you is making me feel like I miss being on stage. I haven't done a show since September, I think, um, because I've been so busy recording the album. And I really just can't wait to get back out and be playing again. So I guess you'll be looking forward to your album launch that's coming up soon. Yes, that's going to be the first time I play live with my new band um and we haven't even rehearsed yet together so that's going to be fun we've got a rehearsal in a couple of weeks um and yeah i'm looking forward to it but i'm a bit anxious about it as well because i've met i've met most of them and i already know them and so that's okay but yeah it's going to be an interesting rehearsal so um, what other members are in your band um, so we've got a drummer called Steve Jackson, who um, he used to be in a band called Wire Daisies in Cornwall quite a long time ago. Um, but he's played with, um, I think it's Elkie Brooks that he's played with and Leo Sayer. So some quite well-known people 
from the generation above mine, <laughs> I think. Um, and then we've got Kev Jeffries, who's played with Roger Taylor um, and a few other people, lots of other people. I mean, he's, yeah, he's worked with lots of musicians. Um, and the guitar, he's, he plays bass. And then there's a guitarist who's called Murray Gould, and I haven't met him yet, but he's also played with the people like Elton John and um, some really well-known, well-known, talented musicians. So I'm looking forward to meeting him. And then we've got me and my friend Xander. <laughs> um, he's been in in a band before, but he's really there because he's a really talented um musician and using kind of technology so I want him to do things like the synth noises and all the kind of little funny beeps and buzzes that that are on my songs that um I don't know how to play <laughs> so he's going to be there with his laptop and a synth um, and then I'll play the piano a bit and the guitar a bit I think and sing sorry that was a really long answer but um yeah that's the band so um can you tell me more about uh, the first single that released called, um, I guess it made their cover called um, Running Up That Hill? Oh, yeah. Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. Yeah. Um, so the first time I played that live was about eight years ago. And I just I was doing a um, a gig playing my own stuff. And I thought, right, I'll chuck a cover in there. And I thought, what can I do? What's my favorite song? And like that is one of my favorite songs of all time. But I thought I'm just playing it on the piano. It's just me. So I'm going to have to change it a bit. Um, so I just made it really slow and, and just piano-y and played it. And people really, really liked it. And I was really surprised because, I, you know, I'd just thrown it in at the last minute almost. Um, and then my dad asked me, he, my dad's a musician too, and he asked me to play it at a, a concert that he did, which is where I recorded the video for it. Um, and that went really well. And so I just thought, yeah, I'll put it out as a single. And yeah, people seem to really like it. Um, yeah, it was it was a good thing to start with, I think, because doing a cover kind of gets people into your music sneakily, <laughs> I think, because they think, oh, I like Kate Bush. Um, so they listen to it because they like Kate Bush. And then suddenly they like, they're like, oh, I don't mind this this person's voice. So... Yeah, it's a great song, isn't it? Yeah. Running up that hill, I mean, not my version, but her her version is <laughs> great. So, Kitty, more about um, before. Before um, was an uh, is is like a compilation album that I put together from all the the songs that I had done with other bands. So, I was in a band called Delaware um first that was one of the first bands I was in and that was just myself and another songwriter a musician um and we yeah there's a few songs on Spotify from Delaware and then I joined a band called All the Fires and we um did quite well we played a few gigs in London and we made a, an album which went down really well and um that was back in 2012 I think that 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 band ended but yeah those songs were quite you know there were some good songs there that I'd written and I thought well or I'd written with other people as well and I thought well you know I might as well put them out on Spotify so that people can hear what I did before I did my solo stuff um so yeah I I don't know if anyone has ever listened to any of the songs on on before because <laughs> it's not really a real out you know it's kind of a made-up album of of previous songs and I really think that the album I've got coming out now, I see that as my first ever album. But if people are interested in what I've done before, then they can look at that, look at before. <laughs> so uh, continuing more about uh, another single that released called um, We Will Ever Rest. Will We Ever Rest? Yeah, that um, was the first single that I did with my producer, Daniel, who I've been working with for um, just over a year. Um, he's based in L.A., and he worked with um he's worked with quite a lot of, of great people but particularly he worked with Sharon Van Etten who I really like her music so I I found him based on her um and he's been so good and we've we've done the whole album basically uh sending emails back and forth 
across <laughs> across the uh, ocean. And yeah, Will We Ever Rest is the first one we did, and it's about mountaineering, which is a strange thing to write a song about. But I have watched the film Everest about, I think it might be about 16 times now. Um, I do watch things quite obsessively. And that was one of the things I've watched loads and loads of times. And then I watched a documentary about mountaineering. And I thought, right, I'm going to write a song about um, about mountaineering and actually about two of the earliest mountaineers, um, the for people who may have actually got to the top of Everest before anybody else but we don't know because they they both died unfortunately and their footage was lost so it's a song about that but it's kind of got a double meaning because it's also about a relationship that has gone wrong and sort of not no one really knowing why and what happened in it so I like writing songs that have got more than one meaning if I can not all of them are some of them are just straightforward <laughs> So where do you get your inspiration from for songwriting? I would say mainly things that happen to me in my life. I think it's kind of like they always say, write about what you know, I guess. And I write a lot about the kind of difficult things that I've experienced or the difficult feelings that I have, because I find that that helps me to deal with it. If I've, if I'm, you know, going through something, writing a song about it helps me to kind of get that feeling out, which is really, I find really helpful. So that's why a lot of them are kind of sad, I guess. Um, but also, I don't know, I, I get inspiration from things like books and TV. I, I quite like poetry. So sometimes I'll read a bit of poetry that I like and it will make me think of something that I want to write a song about. Um and other music really influences me. So I can really tell if I've been listening to something a lot, I start writing songs that have like a little bit of an edge of that person. And I, I try not to do it because I don't want to copy people. But I know for a fact that I've been listening to Taylor Swift so much recently that anything I write now is going to sound a bit like Taylor <laughs> Swift, like, which isn't a bad thing, but I don't want to copy her. So um yeah, I definitely get inspiration from whichever musical artist I'm sort of obsessed with at, at any one time. And at, at the moment, it is definitely Taylor Swift. I've been listening to her new album constantly. So, yeah. <laughs> so, can you tell me more about your latest single called um, Soft Target? Yeah, sure. Soft Target is about being autistic. Um, it's about me finding out that I was autistic when I was an adult. Um, and so I grew up not knowing that I was different in a few ways. And that was kind of hard at times because I didn't understand why I found life so much harder than everybody else seemed to. Um, well, not everybody else, but it always seemed like everybody had like, had days where they were just happy and everything was fine. And I just didn't have days where I was fine ever. Um, there was always something a bit wrong. And I never understood why until I got the diagnosis of autism. And now I can see, I can understand it. And so I wrote Soft Target for all the people like me who haven't been diagnosed until later in life and have had to sort of go through that and only find out later why it was so difficult. Um, and I got to dress up in a bee costume for the video because <laughs> I I thought... What can I sort of do to signify feeling like I'm not really human and I'm not really like everyone else? And I thought, yeah, dress up as a bee. And I got my friend to dress up as a ladybird. Um, we had a great time running around in these suits. <laughs> so you can see that on YouTube <laughs> if you want to laugh at me. So um, can you tell me more about um, your new album that's going to be coming out on the 28th of June called um, Fall of Chemicals? Yeah, um, Full of Chemicals is, it's called that because, um, lots of reasons, but partly because I have to take medication and I have done for most of my life. Um, and sometimes there's things about that that are hard and that I find, yeah, find challenging. Um, 
but also because hormones have really affected me in my life and affect all of us and we don't know very much about hormones and so just the kind of chemical imbalances that we have in our in our brains and bodies make such a big difference to our lives so I wanted to reflect that and one of the songs is called Full of Chemicals um that's coming out when the album comes out that song um and that song was inspired by Fern Brady the comedian who's autistic as well she wrote a really good book about autism and that was one of the things that kind of convinced me that I probably was autistic was reading her book um and yeah so the album was recorded mainly uh but what well, my parts were mainly recorded in Cornwall and then sent over to LA where my producer added a lot of stuff and then I went over to LA in January and finished off the recording with him and I did the vocals over there in the studio which was really cool really fun so um can you tell me more about your album launch that's coming up very soon yeah my album launch is on the 19th of July in Cornwall it's going to be in Falmouth I think or maybe Penryn which is near Falmouth uh, I wanted to do it in my kind of hometown area. Um, I'm going to, it's going to be a small group of people. I don't think it will be more than about 40 people. And it will be people that, probably mostly people that I've invited um, because they've been part of the the creation of the album or they're my friends and family and things. So it will be a nice crowd of people that I know pretty well. Um, and yeah, the band will be playing for the first time. So be really interesting to see how that goes um and we'll be selling the cd then obviously um because by then the, the cd will be on sale and the vinyl will be coming out shortly after that but vinyl i didn't realize how long it takes to make vinyl it's at least nine weeks to print vinyl so um is print vinyl the right word i don't know press press vinyl um so that's going to be available a bit later. And then I'm hoping that I'll be able to do a little tour in September. Um, so I'll hopefully be coming up to places like London and Manchester and Liverpool and trying to play at some smallish kind of venues and just get people to hear my name a bit more and find out a bit more about me. So finally, uh, can you tell my listeners, where can they find you on your social media? Oh, well, I'm on everything, I think. Um, I'm on, uh, I think if you search for Rosalie James on anything, you I'll come up because Rosalie James is quite an unusual name. But Instagram, I'm Rosalie underscore James. Um, and Facebook, I am Rosalie James Music. So you should be able to find me there. But I've also got a website and that's uh, rosaliejames.com. So that's nice and easy. You just got to spell Rosalie right. That's the That's the challenge. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me chat to you today thank you uh, enjoy the rest of your day thanks very much goodbye bye Ruben bye 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 bye